So a function defined as a radical is basically an equation involving a square root. And we know how to graph these equations when there is a linear statement inside the square root. If this was y is equal to 16 minus x, we would know what to do with this. But because we have an x squared in there, that's going to throw things off. So what we have to do is get this equation into a form we recognize. Okay? And by doing that, we actually really have to get rid of the square root. So what I'm going to do is square both sides. And we end up with y squared is equal to 16 minus x squared. And then what we see is that we are dealing with a conic section. We have x squared and y squareds. We want to get those to the same side so we can see what we're working with. And we end up with y squared plus x squared is equal to 16. Okay, this is an equation for a circle, centered at the origin, radius 4. So what I want to do is graph that circle. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm horrible at drawing circles, so this is probably going to look more like an ellipse, but hopefully we'll get the idea of what we're looking at. Okay, so we have our circle centered at the origin, radius 4. The one thing we need to talk about, though, is domain and range restrictions. We started with an equation that had a square root. Okay, And we squared it, so we got rid of the square root, but our initial problem still involved the square root statement. So what we need to think about is what can come out of a square root. Only positive numbers can come out of a square root, which tells me that y actually always has to be positive. The square root, always positive, so therefore we're never actually going to get negative y numbers out of this. Looking at our graph, though, we have negative y numbers down here. So this part of the graph we actually created by squaring this function. Okay? So to really make it be what it should be, we have to get rid of this bottom portion. Okay, You can either erase it on your paper or sometimes teachers will just let you box in the portion that you're looking at. But basically you need to go back and reflect and say, okay, what does the square root really do to my problem? Sometimes it's going to affect the bottom half, sometimes the top, sometimes the right, sometimes the left. And really how you can see that is just by thinking about your domain issues or range issues as they may be. If there was a negative sign out in front of this square root, I would know that my y value has to be negative because a square root has to be positive, therefore y has to be negative. I'm dealing with the y portion, the bottom portion. Same with x equals. If x equals a positive, it has to be the right side. x equals a negative, it has to be the left side. So by knowing what we know about square roots and conic sections, we're able to successfully graph functions defined as radicals.